indeed at the moment the wind industry globally is in a different uh, in a difficult situation we just published our half year figures for the year 2012 and they came out 10 percent lower than in the previous year 2011 that means that the global market uh, is starting to shrink in the year 2012 compared with the previous years and that is in an industry that is used to growth of course a difficult situation because there are now uh, more capacities than the market is uh, capable to absorb so uh, in the short term yeah there is a difficult situation also because there are some market uncertainties in some of the major countries mm -hmm. um, like in the united states we do not know what the future of the support scheme for wind power will be uh, the it's the second largest market then uh, uh, Spain recently they abolished their support scheme for wind power they will do something in addition in the future but at the moment it's not clear what happens there India that was over many years uh, fifth largest market is also they abolished their uh, support scheme and it's not clear what will come so we are a little bit in a difficult situation although there are many new markets now coming up so especially in Latin America Eastern Europe there are uh, new markets, but they need some time to grow, of course. But in this situation, over the next maybe one, two years, the industry is in a difficult situation, no doubt. Are national grids set up enough to deal with wind power? Because you, obviously the wind doesn't blow the whole time, so you do need to have a grid that can, can sort of switch between different forms of energy transmission and have... Do you sense that wind energy has almost saturated those antiquated grids to such an extent they can't cope with new forms of energy? Well, let us start from the easier part of it, and that is the countries, many developing countries that are just starting to set up an infrastructure mm -hmm. for electricity supply and where wind energy, maybe together with other renewables like solar or mm -hmm. hydropower, um, that uh, in these countries where they set up a completely new infrastructure, of course, there is no problem because then the infrastructure can be built from the beginning so that it is uh, adjusted to wind power and to the requirements. Of course, uh, in countries like some of the industrialized countries where all the infrastructure has been made for highly centralized generation of uh, electricity, uh, it's more challenging because we need not only technical, but also we need changes and adjustments. Um, we can see this in, in some countries th that are just starting. Uh, there is no problem at all because most of the industrialized countries, they have strong grids and they can absorb without any changes. They can absorb 5, 10, maybe even 20 percent of wind power. When it comes to higher shares, of course, adjustments will be necessary. There is discussions now ongoing, for example, in Germany, uh, how to do this in the future. But in a, um, if you do it in a smart way, then the extensions can also be uh, minimized by um, looking at different parts of it by uh, putting wind farms in a decentralized way that means you need to put up less additional high voltage power lines so there is a need to adjust but there's not maybe the need is not that strong uh, that big as uh, like some people uh, suggest now mm. and uh, in some countries that's always already been um, also demonstrated that the initial projections of thousands of kilometers have now been reduced. And you mentioned the financial support. Clearly there are many countries who introduced things like feed-in tariffs and they're now maybe sort of pulling, pulling them back. Is it possible for the wind industry to survive without those incentives? Well, we have again a problem, a uh, general problem that the market uh, was designed at a time when we had uh, different generators, different players on the mm. market. Also, the, the way how usually liberalized markets today are working, spot markets cannot work for wind power, can never work for wind power. Wind power like solar has marginal costs that are close to zero. That mm. means that if you just let these uh, operators compete on, the, on a spot market, then the um, spot market price will also go down. We can see the situation already in some of the European countries where the spot market prices have gone down because mm. of wind power mainly and to solar power. So we need a different market design uh, and that uh, we know um, for that purpose a feed-in tariff is very important. Even if it is below the market price one day that we expect, it is just important to secure the investment because mm -hmm. you have high initial investment cost and no or almost zero operation cost. There are some operation costs, but it's relatively low. So um, for wind power, 
like for solar, we will probably in the long term need a kind of market segment that guarantees a minimum price that you can get. And in terms of um, moving forward, do you sense that offshore wind, is, is that going to be the future particularly because there are many people who aren't, um, shall we say it nicely, they're not sort of too, too pleased with the aesthetic qualities of wind turbines on particular parts of the countryside. So is, is offshore the way forward or is that not cost effective? Offshore at the moment represents a relatively small share of the global installations. So it's less than 2% at the moment and we still see major challenges of course on the financial side, the cost side on the one hand, technically it's still a problem of course. Um, it's not the mainstream technology yet. Of course some countries like United Kingdom in particular are investing a lot in offshore so we will have to see whether these uh, problems can be solved. I mean, the, the onshore industry has been able to solve the problems maybe 10, 15 years ago. Um, it is, uh, by the way, uh, interesting to, to notice that uh, the small wind segment has a similar share like offshore wind. That is, wind turbines that are smaller than 50 kilowatt that play a very important role all over the world, especially at this point of time in the unelectrified areas in developing countries. We have a global capacity of offshore wind at the moment of maybe 4,000 megawatt and of small wind turbines coming close to 1,000 megawatt. It's a comparable size, mm. but uh, it's maybe 500,000 units at the moment that are providing electricity from small wind turbines. And in, it's easy to understand that you don't have any aesthetical problems with the small wind turbines because people that living in villages that wouldn't have electricity without that, they will not mm. complain about the wind farms. Um, and by the way, another um, very important instrument for um, increasing the social acceptance is very clearly ownership, any mm. kind of ownership involving people. We have now even scientific studies saying that if the wind farm is owned by the local people, they like them. It's very simple, everybody can understand it, but there is now even scientific proof for that. So um, this uh, question of social acceptance is an important one. The answer is involve the people, and a very good answer to that is make them owners of the wind farm. Very, very briefly, what do you need from this conference, and what do you need from uh, policymakers moving forward? Is it a carbon price? Is it a, a, a global deal that guarantees that everyone will decarbonize their economies? G give me the quick, the quick cure. Okay. Um, carbon price would be good. I'm not sure whether that can uh, come out. We need a positive approach. We need an approach that understands the benefits that come out of renewables in particular. And we hope that the Green Climate Fund can provide funds that can support such positive approaches.